Look everybody, my shop is done. Welcome to another week of Obsessive Cycle Disorder. Okay, so my shop remodel went a little longer than I was hoping it would. But, here we are. Don't have a lot of time to work on the bike this week, so this is gonna be a simpler video. I'm gonna walk through all of the accessories and parts that I got for this project and we're going to go ahead and install uh, a new seat and foot pegs on this video okay first of all we got foot pegs i got off of amazon i think they're about twenty dollars um, this is definitely a needed upgrade if you're going to do any off-road at all on this bike i've taken this on a couple hundred miles of trail so far and as soon as those pegs get wet you're slipping um, you know it's not a lot of money and i think it's going to really add a lot Next up, we have a set of engine crash parts I got from DirtRacks.com. It's a company out of Canada. It seems like they've gotten good reviews on their products on the KLR forums. And uh, they're pretty inexpensive compared to the other stuff on the market. I don't remember exactly what I paid for them. I think it was $150 or less. You're going to go on the bike about like that. It bolts into that subframe bolts there. and the engine mount bolts right there. Really should be a pretty simple install there. I ordered the raw metal. Um, it's significantly cheaper, so I went ahead and got that. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do for them. I might um, do a like a rhino liner on them. I have a powder coater in town I like. I may use him instead, I don't know yet. Next up, we have a little dash kit here. Uh, we got a voltmeter, standard 12 volt socket, and USB ports. So that's going to go ahead and mount up in the dash, so that way I can, you know, keep my phone charged up. I don't really need a voltmeter on this bike, but you know it's nice to have. So there it is. Right now, I'm thinking I'm going to just bend a bracket right off of this where the windshield mounts and i will mount it right up in there it looks like the gauges might hit it but if that's the case i'll just put it down here we'll figure that out when we start fabbing up the bracket while i'm up here i'll show you it's a ram mount cell phone holder um, consists of the base the post and the cell phone mount itself um, you can actually buy these separately off of amazon i think the total is and it'll probably about $20, maybe a little less. But what's nice about this system is um, I could buy new mounts for the handlebars for all of my bikes. I just switch the rest of the assembly over from bike to bike. So that's why I decided to go with that one. Up next, I have Shinko 244 tires. Um, it's a pretty aggressive road tire i'd say it's maybe like a 60 40 60 percent road 40 percent off road i haven't used these yet i've heard good things and they're really inexpensive i got the front and back the whole set for i think it was 110 dollars so i'm excited to find out how those work uh, these knobbies completely unacceptable on the road uh, I've had a couple of pucker moments on that thing when uh, those knobs just let go. They just don't grip the pavement. And we got a new seat. I've actually been watching Craigslist to get one of these used. A new one's like $400 and I just wasn't going to pay it. Factory seat's really not that bad. But um, I wanted one of these seats. I found this one on Craigslist. Um, it was listed for $130. Oh, it was definitely priced to sell. It's worth every penny. Uh, one feature of the seat is it's very low. I'd say it's a solid three inches lower than that stock seat. It just completely scooped out right here. What that will allow me to do is I can replace those suspension links right there with the stock ones. 
those links lower the bike by one and a half or two inches, I don't remember. But that'll let me lift the bike back up, get full suspension travel again, and still be able to reach the ground. I also got a, an assortment of sprockets and a new chain for this thing. This is a replacement stock rear sprocket for this bike. Um, I got two new front sprockets, uh, 16 tooth and a 14 tooth. 14 is what comes standard on the bike. Um, right now it has a 12 tooth on there. Gets you a ton of torque in the low range, but it really limits your top speed. So I'm planning on doing a trip on this bike. So I'm gonna probably put the 16 tooth on there for now. Uh, for normal round town riding, I have the 14 tooth. If I know I'm gonna be off road doing some trails, I could always put that 12 tooth back on. It's actually pretty easy to swap these out. I know a lot of guys carry these with them in their bags so they could swap them out as they go. I don't know a lot about this chain. I've never heard of it. All I know is it got good reviews on Amazon, so I bought it. 16 tooth sprocket was 20. This sprocket and this sprocket and the chain came as a kit. I believe it was about 50 or $60 on Amazon. And for the grand finale, we have luggage. I'm actually really excited about this. I found these cases. They're pretty much a Pelican case knockoff. I found on mcmelectronics.com. They're really inexpensive. I think they were $40 a piece or something like that. I'm gonna build a bracket to attach them to the luggage rack. I'm gonna to try to keep it a quick disconnect so I could just lift them off and bring them into the tent or hotel room or wherever I happen to be. And the last thing I have is this top case. It's from the same company, the same website. I'm not completely convinced about this one yet. It's awfully big but more importantly, it's pretty heavy. KLRs have a reputation for having a not great subframe, and I'm not sure I want that much weight bouncing around up on top. I don't know, I'll go ahead and mount it and see how I feel, but it fits full face helmet real nice, and it has all the features of the smaller side cases. I'm gonna need to flip this thing over and scoot the box back a little bit. I actually figured I could use this section here, once it's flipped over, I'm going to mount a LED light bar on it to act as a, a larger tail light. So. so there we go. Those are all the accessories I have for this project so far. Um, for this video, we're going to go ahead and mount up the seat and the foot pegs. And we'll go ahead and call it a day. Really a very simple process. All you have to do is remove the side covers, two screws. And there are two screws, one on each side for the seat itself. The seat just lifts off. You lift it in the back and you slide it backwards and it just comes right off. It has a little hook in the front just hooks under the gas tank and then it has those two bolts in the back. And the new seat goes on just as easily as that one came off. Slide it forward, push it down. And you pop the side covers right back on. It has a little flange right here in the back that just needs to go underneath the tail section. And it really is just that simple. Uh, just a couple minutes, you got a nice low seat. And the foot pegs really aren't that much more difficult. Um, it just has a little C-clip on the bottom. That pin lifts right out and off comes the peg. New one just sits right in there. Place the peg and replace the C-clip. And there we go. So that's a couple of real quick, simple upgrades. Really only took a few minutes, and I think they're both gonna make a world of difference on this bike. 
If you plan on riding a KLR off-road, you really don't want to be messing with the suspension height at all. I don't know why people do that so frequently. You know, a lowered seat is just as effective and you get to keep all of your suspension travel, so. All right, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and why don't you go ahead and let me know what you think of my shop remodel and my KLR projects. I'll see you next week.